بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم. Uh, last lecture uh, we talk about cholinergic agonist. Uh, إن شاء الله today our lecture is about cholinergic antagonist. What is called parasympathetics. Cholinergic antagonist uh, also called cholinergic blockers or parasympathetics. Sometimes also termed anticholinergic drugs fall into three categories. These include antimuscarinic receptors, antimuscarinic agents that selectively block the muscarinic receptors, such as atropine, hyoscine, which is also called scopolamine, cyclobentulate, tropicamide, clinidium bromide, uh, a lot of drugs. Uh, they block selectively the muscarinic receptors at the both synaptics because usually muscarinic receptors occur both synaptically at the bus uh, at the bus uh, bus ganglionic fiber at the effector organs either sweet uh, either glands smooth muscles or cardiac muscles block muscarinic synapse of the parasympathetic nerves the second group of drugs that belong to uh, cholinergic antagonists are the ganglionic blockers. Ganglionic blockers. This type of drugs block the nicotinic receptor selectively the N type that occur at the autonomic ganglia. So they are called ganglionic blockers. So these type of drugs tend to block both sympathetic and parasympathetic uh, ganglia because they are the same they having the same receptor they having the same neurotransmitter which has a uh, style calling and the third type the last type of the cholinergic antagonist are the skeletal neuromuscular blocking agents that interfere with the uh, activation of the nicotinic receptors of the muscle type in M type that occur at the motor in blood at the neuromuscular junction and inshallah we'll talk uh, about this uh, type of drugs first we'll start by the muscarinic antagonist that selectively block the muscarinic receptors these muscarinic drugs uh, these anti-muscarinic drugs they have no or very little action at the skeletal neuromuscular injection or autonomic ganglia because these drugs selectively block the muscarinic receptors and uh, at the neuromuscular injection there is a nicotinic receptor uh, and also at the autonomic ganglia there is another subtype of nicotinic uh, receptor so they have no effect on autonomic ganglia and on the neuromuscular junction this type of drugs uh, and antimuscarinic drugs include the famous drug latrubine and this is a prototype all of these drugs called atrubine like drugs because the, it's a prototype of this group atrubine hyoscine uh, which is a this is a british name of hyoscine uh, of the drug is hyoscine scovalamine is another name of hyoscine is an american usp according to american usp US, uh, US, uh, US uh, pharmacopoeia called hyoscine uh, at, at uh, scopolamine. Uh, both atrubine and hyoscine are natural occurring alkaloids. We have uh, also home atrubine synthesized or semi synthesized from an atrubine, tropicamide, cyclobentulate, abratrobium, famous drug used uh, treatment of asthma, probenthaline. Darifinazine, which is a selective M3 antagonist, as we see uh, when we talk about the muscarinic receptors, and the pyrinzabine, which is a selective M1 antagonist. The various drugs are the, uh, the, uh, the atropine, hyoscine, homatropine, tropicamide, cyclobentulate, ebratrobium, uh, and propensaline. These are non selective muscarinic antagonists. That means these drugs can block. Uh, all of the muscarinic receptors M1, M2, M3, uh, M4, and M5. The pharmacokinetics, if we talk about the pharmacokinetics of these uh, anti muscarinic uh, drugs, trubin like drugs, they are well absorbed 
from the GIT. Atropine widely distributed after absorption, distributed through the throughout all of the body. Uh, it is uh, rapidly eliminated so that it disappears rapidly from the blood, and we find that 80% of the atropine uh, is uh, excreted uh, in the urine. Uh, its effect on the parasympathetic nervous, nervous system declines rapidly because it is uh, eliminated rapidly, except the effect of atropine uh, on the eye persists for about 48 to 72 hours, two to three days. This is because the eye have a poor blood supply, so it can persist for longer time. Uh, in the eye, it used uh, in the eye, uh, eye drops because it can, as you will see, in the pharmacodynamic effects because it can produce mydriasis, so it used for examination of the eye because it uh, produce uh, mydriasis. The pharmacodynamic effects of muscarinic antagonist first. Uh, inhibition of secretion and this is very sensitive uh, effect so you will find directly one of the famous adverse effects side effects of these drugs is they produce dry mouth because they inhibit salivation inhibition of secretion salivary secretion lacrimal secretion bronchial secretion and sweet uh, also uh, sweet, uh, they inhibit the secretion of the sweet gland uh, even by low doses, uh, so that this effect is very sensitive effect uh, of, of atropine to produce uh, or to inhibit the uh, secretion. One of these effects, uh, Galileo bronchial secretion, the facility atropine preoperative, pre uh, before the surgery to, to, to decrease the bronchial secretion in in order to uh, improve the uh, flow or inhalation the airways through the airways so it can be used uh, pre-operative to decrease the bronchial secretion uh, their effects their pharmacodynamic effects with heart on the heart they produce tachycardia this is due to the blockage of m2 receptor on the heart especially on the atrium as we see uh, in the previous lecture so they produce uh, tachycardia this uh, for this reason atropine can be used for treatment of bradycardia just that flow with myocardial infarction myocardial infarction that's all about you bradycardia in eligible IV atropine the intravenous atropine in order to enhance uh, to, uh, to, um, to stop, to block a vagal stimulation of the heart, the whole vagal stimulation of the heart, parasympathetic effect of the heart, tend to decrease, to slow the heart rate, to slow the force of contraction. So the opposite, the opposite effect that produced by atropine due to the blockage of this type of muscarinic receptor will result in, in tachycardia. Uh, the third pharmacodynamic effects of muscarinic, if, uh, of muscarinic antagonist on the eye. As we see in the previous lecture, the effects of muscarinic agonist on eye, muscarinic agonist on eye, they produce meiosis. So the opposite effects that produced by muscarinic antagonist due to the blockage of the muscarinic, uh, muscarinic receptors on the eye, they, they will produce mydriasis. The first effect, mydriasis. This is the opposite of the meiosis. As we see in the previous lecture, meiosis is produced due to the contraction of the, uh, of the, uh, of the iris pupillae muscle, the circular muscles due to the activation of a stylcholine of the muscarinic receptors that present on this uh, muscle, circular muscle, iris pupillae muscle. The blockage of these receptors by atropine will produce mydriasis. Mydriasis, the hot of the 
pupil dilatation my dresses. this is produced by atropine so atropine is available as eye drop for the ophthalmic examination to uh, to produce my dresses in order to facilitate the eye examination عشان ما يوسع الحدقه بتاعت العين ويخلي الاخصائي بتاع العين يقدر يشوف ما بداخل الاي 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 بول الريتينا فور اكزامبل اند ذس ذا افكت اوف اتروبين فيرست افكت اوف اتروبين از تو بروديوس ماي دريسيس ذا سكند افكت ذات بروديوس باي ماسكارينيك انتاجونست ذا اتروبين لايك دراكس اون ذا اي ذا بروديوس سايكلوبليجيا سايكلوبليجيا مينز باراليسيس اوف ذا سيلياري ماسل paralysis of the ciliary muscle because as we see in the previous lecture muscarinic agonist by acting on muscarinic receptors that occur on the ciliary muscle this tend to uh, contract a ciliary body inward and outward in the anterior chamber of the eye and this is very important for accommodation for near vision so by blocking these muscarinic receptors Okay, that occur on the ciliary muscle, they will relax this muscle and this will lead to paralysis of the ciliary muscle. The paralysis of the ciliary muscle is called cycloplegia. cycloplegia. And this is, will lead directly the th to the third effect of the muscarinic antagonist on the eye, the impairment of accommodation for near vision. Impairment of accommodation for near vision. Tell me, Marid, how can they make accommodation for near vision? Because these receptors are blocked, leading to paralysis, leading to relaxation on the ciliary muscle. So the focal lengths will not be adapted to the to see or to to accommodate for near vision. So this will lead to accommodation for near vision. Uh, the last effect that produced my by muscarinic antagonist on the eye is to increase the intraocular pressure and this is the opposite effect of that produced by muscarinic agonist uh, regarding an intraocular, uh, intraocular pressure we see in the previous lecture that muscarinic agonists tend to decrease the intraocular pressure by two mechanisms first by once by contracting the ciliary uh, the pupillae iris muscles the circular muscles will lead to decreasing uh, or enhancing the or increasing the angle between the canal of the slim and the iris and this will uh, in, in, improve the drainage of the aqueous humor through the canal of slim uh, the second effect by contracting the ciliary muscle and pulling the ciliary body inward and outward this will improve the flow the flow of the aqueous humor and the increasing the flow will also stimulate the drainage stimulate the, dra uh, is the drainage increasing the drainage of the aqueous humor will decrease the intraocular pressure so we see as we saw that the bilocarbine can be used for treatment of glaucoma here the vice versa atropin and atropin like drug the muscarinic antagonists tend to increase the intraocular pressure, so they are contraindicated. They are contraindicated in the patient that suffer from glaucoma or the patient with glaucoma. Patient, patient endom glaucoma, we don't give them anti-muscarinic drug. We don't give them muscarinic antagonists because they can increase the intraocular pressure, so they can increase the leading to the worseness of. The disease of the glaucoma. The effects of muscarinic antagonist on a GIT, they decrease the GIT motility. The vice versa effects of muscarinic agonist, they decrease the GIT motility. So you will find one of the famous adverse effects of these drugs. They can lead to constipation. Hyoscine used 
as antispasmodic is one, one of the clinical uses of uh, antimuscarinic drugs because this can decrease the GIT motility and the spasm, the GIT spasm, the, the, the pain uh, can be relieved by hyoscine, especially hyoscine, either tablet or IV can be used as antispasmodic. We will find also they decrease the GIT secretions so that pyrinzabine, which is selective M1 antagonist, as we know, will inhibit gastric acid secretion and uh, so this uh, lead to that pyrinzabine can be used for treatment of peptic ulcers. Uh, the pharmacodynamic effects of muscarinic antagonist on the bronchial uh, smooth muscles they will lead to relaxation of bronchial smooth muscle the vice versa effects of muscarinic agonist so that we will find that abratrobium can be used uh, as in inhaler by inhalation for treatment of asthma because it can lead to bronchial smooth muscle relaxation this can lead to bronchodilatation so this is one of the drugs that used in treatment of uh, asthma. The effects of muscarinic antagonist on the central nervous system, we will find that atropine will, with low doses produce excitatory effects on the CNS. This lead to mild restlessness, but it become endogalic, mild restlessness, while high doses of atropine produce further CNS similar uh, effect leading to agitation and disorientation and this is one of the characteristic symptoms of atropine poisoning higher dose of atropine the effects uh, on the central nervous system lead to uh, agitation and disorientation and now we will talk about the clinical uses of muscarinic antagonist and the first one uh, in the treatment of bradycardia uh, that flowed or after myocardial infarction as we mentioned uh, we use atropine, IV, atropine uh, to suppress or to inhibit the vagal stimulation, so tend to increase the heart rate and force of contraction. Uh, also, the second use, uh, antimuscarinic drugs can be used to dilate the pupil, as also we mentioned. Uh, we will find that tropicamide, cyclobentilate, and even atropine also, all of these drugs are available as eye drop for treatment of uh, or not treatment for examination for examination of the eye this is uh, one of the use uh, use of drugs as diagnostic for diagnosis just to my to, to produce my diuresis my diuresis uh, to increase the pupil size to to examine to investigate what uh, inside the uh, the eyeball retina or whatever uh, the third clinical use of antimuscarinic drug is uh, which is commonly used uh, is to prevent the motion sickness motion sickness the viral bar and especially we use hyoscine scopolamine uh, some ones some individuals suffer from motion sickness uh, when they travel uh, for example on ship uh, on seas and surrounded by the water they will suffer from nausea and vomiting and vertigo so to prevent this uh, very effective hyoscine can be used before before the, the the before one day of the planned travel day uh, can be used to prevent this motion sickness cns effect this is a cns effects uh, the, the fourth clinical use for antimuscarinic drugs uh, they are, can be used for treatment of parkinsonism especially the central acting antimuscarinic drug they should say they should cross the blood brain barrier. Center uh, acting antimuscarinic drugs such as the benzhexol. Benzhexol have another name, American name. It's called trihexavenidyl. Famous drug that used for treatment of Parkinsonism. Uh, with uh, famous with the brand name uh, Artin Akisol. Also at benz atribin, uh, can be used. Uh, as we uh, inshallah we'll see uh, or we'll talk about this in more details uh, regarding the CNS pharmacology. The also antimuscarinic drugs can be used for treatment of asthma as I mentioned uh, especially uh, abratrobium can be used uh, as inhaler for treatment of asthma because it can produce bronchodilatation through the relaxation of uh, bronchial smooth muscle. 
this is cobalamin for treatment of motion uh, sickness uh, also the antimuscarinic drugs can be used as i mentioned uh, as pre-anesthetic medication to dry the bronchial secretion in order to enhance the flow or the, the clearance of the airways uh, atribin can be used for this purpose they commonly use as antispasmodic especially high uc also they can be used to facilitate the git uh, endoscope uh, and git radiology through the relaxation by relaxation of this uh, smooth muscle so they can enable an easy uh, uh, insertion of the endoscope so can be used before uh, endoscopy and radiology also and how you think can be used for this purpose one of the most also clinical use for the anti drugs is for treatment of irritable bowel syndrome we will find uh, clinidium in the form of clinidium bromide with uh, chlordiazeboxide if you uh, know that uh, boxidium paralex librax is a combination of this anti muscarinic drug clinidium bromide with another uh, benzodiazepine drug because the irritable bowel syndrome uh, sometimes can associate it with uh, abdominal pain, abdominal cramps. Uh, so these drugs are effective for treatment uh, for treatment of the symptoms of an IBS, irritable bowel uh, syndrome. Uh, also, as we see previously, uh, pyrazine, which is selective, with a select, which is an selective M1 antagonist, can be used for treatment of uh, peptic ulcer. And last. They can be used for treatment of overactive bladder, especially the diarivinacin, which is a selective M3 antagonist, as we see. Uh, this can decrease the urgency to the urinate through the relaxation that produced on the detrosal uh, muscles of, of the bladder. So this can decrease uh, this the contraction of these muscles, and this can uh, lead to the decrease in the uh, uh, urine voiding and urine uh, agency. Uh, this is for some of the pharmaceutical dosage forms that are available for the anti muscarinic drugs. Uh, this is scopolamine as a tablet for prevention of uh, motion sickness. This is an ebrotrobium as inhaler for treatment of asthma. This is atrubin as eye drop for the examination, retinal examination, uh, to produce uh, to produce my my diuresis. And uh, last, we have this is one of the oxybutynin. This is uh, also a selective M3 antagonist can be used for treatment of overactive bladder, especially uh, in female. Now we'll talk about the anticholinergic side effects. Anticholinergic side effects can uh, the first one: dry mouth, uh, blurred vision, blurred vision due to the mitosis and due to the impairment of accommodation for near vision. Uh, also, urinary retention and constipation due to the decre uh, relaxation of the uh, detrosal muscle of the bladder and relaxation of the GIT smooth muscles. Tachycardia, as we see, can be also occur as side effects due to the inhibition of an M2 receptor on the heart. Dizziness, this is a central effect, they can produce dizziness. Confusion, also central side effects. And nausea, also this is a central uh, adverse uh, effects. Uh, this is the most common adverse effects that associated with anticholinergic uh, anti drugs. Pharmacologically, we have a famous group of drugs having anticholinergic side effects due to that they be, 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 beside their the main pharmacological action, they having anti-muscarinic adverse effects because they can block the muscarinic receptor. For example, the antihistamine. And the antihistamines such as chlorvinyramine, tropicamide, uh, sorry, triprolidine. These drugs having anticholinergic side effects 
because they also be, be beside the, the their main effect which is a blockage of the uh, l1 receptor histamine receptor h1 receptor they also block the muscarinic receptor so they produce these side effects also we have the drugs that called tricyclic antidepressant one of the CNS uh, dr uh, drugs that used for treatment of depression is one of the famous adverse effects of these drugs they having anticholinergic side effect binaskura kida ijmari nangul anticholinergic side effect nangul drugs and anticholinergic side effects ونحن نكون عارفين في بالنا خاطين في بالنا these side effects dry mouth blurred vision urinary retention constipation tachycardia dizziness confusion nausea بعض antipsychotic drugs and antipsychotic drugs these are drugs that mainly block the dopamine receptors but also they have an effect on muscarinic receptors so they have anticholinergic side effects the contraindication of anticholinergic drugs first glaucoma as we saw because they tend to increase the intracranial pressure the second contraindication معنى استخدام للانتكولينيك دراكس they are not advised to be used in elderly people with prostatic hypertrophy by default why because these drugs tend to cause urinary retention and this elderly patient with prostatic hypertrophy also suffer from urinary retention so this can worsen the urinary retention uh, on these uh, patients now we'll talk about the neuromuscular blocking drug drugs that interfere with the cholinergic transmission at the motor end plate at the neuromuscular junction at the nicotinic receptor of the m type these drugs are uh, fall into two categories the first one non depolarizing blocking agent and this is uh, termed competitive competitive لانه نحن لو زدنا الاستايل هي فقط نون ديبولارايزنج معناه هم بيرتبطوا بالريسبتورز اللي هي النيكوتينيك ريسبتور زيهم وزي الاتروبين لما يرتبط بالمسكانيك ريسبتور لكن ويزاوت اكتيفيشن سو ذي ار انتاغونيست انتاغونيست ات ان ام تايب اوف ريسبتور اكزامبل لهم تيوكرالين بانكيورونيوم فيركيورونيوم ان جالامين طيب هم كومبيتيتيف ليه بنقول عليهم كومبيتيتيف لانه لو زدنا الاستايل كولين هيعمل اوفركم ليهم هيزيحهم من الريسبتور بتاعتهم وهنزيد الاستايل كولين كيف هنقدر نزيده بواسطه الانتي كولين ستريز اللي اتكلمنا عنها المره اللي فاتت الانتي كولين اللي هي الاندايركتلي اكتنج كولينرجيك اجونست انتي كولين ستريز يعني النيوستيجمين والفيزيستيجمين لانه هيعمل انهيبيشن للانزيم الكولين ستريز انزيم بالتالي هي يزيد الاندوجين ستايل كولين وستايل كولين هيعمل اوفركم هيعمل ريموف ليه؟ هيعمل لهم ريموف من الريسبتورز عشان كده هم بنسميهم بنسميهم كومبيتيتيف سميناهم برضه نان ديبولارايزنج لانهم ما عندهم اجونستيك افكت جاست لما يعملوا اكيو باي للريسبتور فقط بيعمل لها كلو بيعمل لها كلوز زيهم زي اللي هم الترو انتاجونست Uh, the second type of this group, neuromuscular blocking drugs, uh, sorry, before we're talking about the second type, these drugs, they act as competitive, as I mentioned, competitive antagonists at the style choline nicotinic receptor and M type. At uh, the prototype of this group of drugs, the non depolarizing competitive neuromuscular blocking drugs, is the tubocrarine, uh, natural occurring alkaloid from the plant, curare plant. Because it's a quaternary ammonium compound, very boiled compound, so it does not cross the placenta, uh, so that it cannot be absorbed when given orally, so it must be used only by injection. By injection. So this drug, uh, previously in the history, used safely in hunting animals. Can be studied with animals, be given the sham, the arrows. بي بيخطوا على راسه ديس البلانت بي بيعملوا لها خلطه مع البلانت كورير بلانت واللي هو اصلا فيه تيبوكرارين وبعد ذاك لما يصادبوا يغرسوا السهم 
في الانيمال في المصل تحت الانيمال طوالي معناه عملنا انجكشن عملنا برانتل انجكشن للدراج بتاعنا تيبو كلارين وهيحصل له طوالي يحصل له البلط ولما يحصل البلط يمشي يتوزع مع البلط لحد ما يحصل نيوروموسكولار انجكشن وينافس ينافس الاستايكولين يعمل بلوك للريسبتر بتاعته ال ان ان تاي وبالتالي سايكولين ما هيعمل كونتراكشن وبالتالي هيحصل مصر ريلاكزيشن هيحصل مصر ريلاكزيشن وبالتالي الانيمال ما هيقدر يتحرك ما هيقدر يجري هيحصل له باراليسيس وبعد ذاك يستخدموه في او يصطادوه بسهوله وهو سيف ليه؟ لانهم بعدين لما يتناولوا اللحمه بتاعت بتاعت الانيمال ده هي عملوا اورال اورال انجيشن والاورال ما هيحصل له ابسوربشن معناه طوال هيحصل هيطلع مع الفيزيز وما هيكون عنده افكت في الهيومن ذا ذا ريفكس اوف ذيس جروب اوف دراكس نون ديبولايزنج نيورو ماسكولار نيورو بلوكينج ايجنتس ذا ريفكس ار مينلي از اي ميشن ديو تو موتر باراليسيس اند ذا فيريس ماسل ذات افكتد باي ذيس دراك are the extrinsic eye muscles عشان كده لما نحكينا للمريض اول حاجه اول ايفكت بيظهر لنا اللي بيظهر في الاكسترينسيك ماسل اوف ذا اي والمريض بيبدا يشعر بانه هو شايف دبل فيجن شايف الحياه اثنين اثنين دبل فيجن نتيجه للباراليسيس اللي بيحصل في الاكسترينسيك ماسل اوف ذا اي زين بعد ذاك بيحصل ايفكت في الماسل اوف ذا فيس واللمس And fortunately, the last muscle affected by this type of drugs is the diaphragm muscle. Diaphragm muscle. This is the last muscle affected. Well, now if I can, the first muscle to be affected, I can't. 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 Uh, also uh, uh, here uh, when the varix affected this can lead to difficulty in swallowing بالنسبه للمريض بيشعر بانه في صعوبه في الابتلاع نتيجه للريلاكزيشن اللي بيحصل في الفارينكس the side effects of curare curare and the group of these drugs bancuronium vercuronium galamine uh, their side effects they can produce fall in arterial pressure For in arterial pressure, this is due to ganglionic block. We have a block in the ganglion. Well, block in the ganglion. This can affect the sympathetic, sympathetic activation, and this will produce vasodilatation. Also, they can release the histamine from the muscle, so this can lead to bronchospasm in the patient that sensitive or asthmatic patient or individual that having. أزمة أو سفر فرم أزمة. The third side effects that galamine and bancuronium because they are selective for M2, they also can block M2 receptor on the heart. This can lead to tachycardia as we mentioned previously. The clinical uses of non-debolizing the competitive neuromuscular blocking drugs. First, they can be used for skeletal muscle paralysis for all surgical requirements. ودائما واحدة من البري أنيسات البري أنيساتيك عن بري أوبريتيف ميديكيشن بنستخدمه بالذات إذا كان المريض هو عنده ميجر سيرجري بنعمل مصري لاكزيشن مصري لاكزيشن بدل ما يعني نغيد المريض على الطاولة نعمل له مصل جس سكليتال مصري لاكزيشن لللمس بتاعته بواسط and non deborizing neuromuscular blocking drugs. Also, they can be used to control the ventilation in patients that with ventilatory, ventilatory failure from various, various causes to control ventilation to provide adequate volumes and expansion of the lungs. The patient in them hyperventilation. And hyperventilation cannot allow ما بيقدر يسمح لي ب اديكويت تايم فور الغاز اكستشينج ف سو تو بروفايد ذيس اكسبانشن اوف ذا لانجز اند ذا تايم فور 
uh, for exchange of the gases this can be uh, provided by these uh, neuromus uh, neuromuscular blocking drugs but should be used cautiously under the control because the patient should be uh, under uh, ventilator because they can lead if not controlled they can lead to uh, respiratory failure the last clinical use for non depolarizing neuromuscular blocking drugs is the treatment of convulsion due to the status epilepticus which, which is an emergency case there is continuous tonic colonic, tonic -colonic uh, epilepsy uh, as example if you could, uh, there is a continuous uh, contraction of the of the limbs so to terminate this contraction we can use this non depolarizing neuromuscular blocking drugs the second group or the second category of these drugs neuromuscular blocking drugs is depolarizing depolarizing blocking agent and from the name depolarizing means that they have agonistic effect they can activate the receptor by producing depolarization such as that depolarization produced by a cycle in itself but due to that they are insensitive to the choline stress produced in the and uh, that occur uh, in the neurons and low through choline stress they cannot be hydrolyzed by this enzyme so their effect will be persist persist their opening for this uh, activation of this receptor and the opening of the channel associated with this receptor the sodium channels associated with the nicotinic receptors will not produce uh, will not allow a new action potential to be produced so they will produce an, a type of blockage called depolarizing blockage depolarizing blockage we'll see uh, example for these drugs we have a saxamisonium saxamisonium this is a british name the name the uh, the name for this drug is a succinyl choline uh, the american name for this drug is succinyl choline succinyl choline is the same drug who called saxamisonium according to british pharmacopoeia and also we have another drug called decamisonium decamisonium and saxamisonium these are depolarizing blocking agents they work by depolarizing plasma membrane of the muscle fiber similar to acetylcholine as i mentioned they resist but they resistant to true choline stress their action will be only terminated by pseudo choline stress that occur uh, in the plasma uh, in the normal action potential acetylcholine when uh, bind to its receptor this will lead to propagation of action potential and the action potential will lead to contraction of the skeletal skeletal muscle cell and this will lead to depolarization this occurs within millisecond then this effect is followed by rapid cleavage of acetylcholine rapid hydrolysis of acetylcholine by choline stress low through choline uh, stress in case of saxamisonium and decamisonium which are resistant to uh, the, uh, to alkaline stress through choline stress they first will bind to the, the receptor because they are agonist they can produce action uh, lead to an action potential and lead to contraction in kida so that they will lead to muscle fasciculation يعني في لما نحكي له للمريض بيحصل muscle twitching muscle fasciculation muscle contraction small muscle contraction but due to that saxamisonium saxamisonium not degraded by choline stress this will lead to persistent depolarization of the end plate so that a new action potential a new contraction cannot be elicited cannot be produced and this is termed what is termed a depolarizing blockage this is the depolarizing blockage so that these drugs are called depolarizing blockage by the way these depolarizing blockers cannot be uh, cannot be overcome by a new stigmine or this stigmine anticholinesterase uh, 
so they are not they are called non-competitive 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 uh, the same uh, the polarizing block, uh, blockers are non-competitive because their action cannot be terminated by the uh, anti colonist race but uh, even this blockage can be increased by anti colonist race because they are aragonist and we, in case of anti colonist race we increase the indigenous cycling we, we increase the agonist uh, the concentration of uh, agonist this can lead to worseness or can can stimulate can stimulate or add their pharmacodynamic, uh, pharmacodynamic effect and now we'll talk about the side effects of uh, saxamisonium as a prototype for this non uh, for this debolarizing neuromuscular blocking drug here can between two brackets non-competitive Deborizing neuromuscular blocking drugs, non competitive. Example, Saxamisonia. Their side effects they can produce bradycardia, and this is due to direct um, uh, muscarinic action. Prevented, uh, this bradycardia, bradycardia can be prevented by atropine. They will produce bradycardia because they can stimulate the muscarinic receptors on the heart, leading to bradycardia. But these effects can be prevented by giving atropine before this. Uh, before these drugs also it can lead to release of potassium from the cells and this will lead to hyperkalemia and hyperkalemia the dangerous situation because it can lead to cardiac arrhythmias and cardiac uh, arrest uh, also this uh, saxamisonium can increase the intraocular pressure so it's also contraindicated in glaucoma as uh, the anti muscarinic drugs also it's contraindicated in glaucoma because it can, uh, can increase the uh, intraocular uh, pressure. Uh, malignant hyperthermia. Malignant hyperthermia. Uh, this is a rare and inherited condition. This is one of the pharmacogenetics uh, variation among the individuals. Malignant hyperthermia. Uh, Feel patients okay in the patients that having a defect in a type of receptors called rhinogen receptors one of the calcium receptors that sequestered the calcium in the sarcoplasmic reticulum the battle mother point of genetic defect uh, at this type of receptor rhinogen receptors uh, receptors that uh, restrict or Squid, uh, restrict the calcium in the sarcoplasmic reticulum. That is like calcium inside the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Become here, become here uh, defected uh, genetically, can be inherited. This, uh, the patient, when uh, taken saxamisonium, the saxamisonium can lead to release of the calcium because the, uh, this type of receptor cannot, uh, cannot restrict the calcium inside the sarcoplasmic reticulum and the release of calcium is associated with the contraction uh, the, and the muscle contraction this muscle contraction will lead to generation of the heat and this will lead to malignant hyperthermia if you care in this uh, individual or in these uh, patients this can be treated by a drug called dantrolene Dantrolene, this is a cal uh, this one of uh, drugs that can block this type of receptor lead defected calcium receptor can block this defected calcium receptor uh, receptor preventing the opening of this receptor by the saxamisonium the last side effects of saxamisonium is that saxamisonium can produce prolonged paralysis in some individuals also this is an inherited condition one of the pharmacodynamic uh, uh, pharmacodynamic or uh, pharmacogenetic variation that the uh, bad individuals bad al marda يكون عندهم deficiency في acetylcholine stress acetylcholine stress اللي هو الانزيم that we mentioned uh, occur on the plasma بعض المرضى بيكون عندهم deficiency في الانزيم ده اللي هو acetylcholine stress وده هو الانزيم اللي بيعمل لي Degradation of saxamisonium. Lano saxamisonium does not affect it by a two coiling series موجود في the neurons. فهو لا بد يحصل لهم metabolism بواسط two coiling series الموجود في البلازم. طيب بعض المرضى genetically وراثيا هم عندهم deficiency في two coiling series. 
باي ذا واي بالمناسبه السكس ميسونيوم هاو شورت ديوريشن اوف اكشن الاكشن بتاعه اباوت 5 minutes اونلي 5 minutes دايما عشان كده بنستخدمه في الاندوسكوبي لانه يعمل لي مس ريلاكسيشن فور في فور في يو فور في في يو بيريد اوف تايم 5 minutes يعمل مس ريلاكسيشن طيب ان كيس اوف المرضى اللي عندهم سيدوكوالين ستريس بيعمل لي برونجيد باراليسيس والبرونجيد باراليسيس ده يمكن يعمل لي حي اسي لي حتى في الديافرام يعمل لي ابنيه وهي ممكن تكون مشكله سيريس كونديشن في بعض المرضى وخاصه انه هو خش على عمليه سيرجري ف ذيس از برونجيد باراليسيس اوكي قلنا في بعض المرضى اللي عندهم جينيتيكال جينيتيكالي سيدوكوالين ستريس ديفيشنسي فور اكزامبل ذيس از ريتن باي باي ان ايجيبشن فيزيشن في الصيف بتاع تقدير مصري اسمه لطفي سالم كان عمل تقريبا في 1000 في سنه 2000 عمل هو عمل تخدير لمريضه وطبعا بالصدفه المريض انت بتكون عارف ان هو عنده سيدو كولين ستريس هي لانها رير نادره فعمل ليها بيعمل لها في التخدير قبل بيفور او بري انيستكس كانت ده سيدو كانت ده سكسا ميسونيوم اللي هو سكسا نايل كولين فالمريضه عانت بعد ذاك من برونجد باراليس عانت من ابنيه بعد ذاك بيكون في الطريقه اللي بتعمل لها تعيد لها التنفس بتاعها قبل فور السيرجري وهي المريضه كان عندها سيزيريان سيكشن عمليه بتاعت ولاده غيصريه بعد ما طلعت منها بسلامه والمشكله اتعالجت البرونجد ابنيه اتعالجت فكتب ليها الوصفه او كتب ليها الورقه دي ونصحها قال ليها انت بعد ذاك لو قدر الله انك خشيتي اي عمليه ثانيه او قبل ما تخشي عمليه توري الاخصائي بتاع التخدير او الطبيب بتاعك تديه الورقه دي والورقه كاتب ليها فيها انها هي كيس اوف سيدوكوالين ستريس ديفيشنسي المريضه دي عندها سيدوكوالين ستريس ديفيشنسي فبالتالي تيك كير بي كير فور يور كايند كير خلي بالك من انها تقوم تمشي تديها سكسا ميسونيوم لانه هي عندها سيدوكوالين ستريس ديفيشنسي فقدر الله انه الاخصائي ده دكتور لطفي ده توفى وبعد فتره بعد 10 سنه سنه 2010 او ما متذكر التقرير اللي هم بعد فتره من الزمن فهي المره دي كانت محتفظه بالورقه وقدر الله انها احتاجت لان يعمل لها جراحه تقريبا كاردياك سيرجري وكانت محتفظه بالورقه ولما جاء قبل العمليه ادت ال اللي هي الورقه دي للاخصائي بتاع التخدير وللصدفه واللي هو الناشر الورقه دي كان الاخصائي التخدير ده هو اسمه محمد لطفي سالم هو ولد الاخصائي الاول الوالد اللي كون اللي هو توفى فهو كتب في الفيس نشر الورقه دي وقال الورقه من والده اللي توفى قبل كم سنه لمريضه هي وصلته الان فدي عشان تتذكروا بها السيدوكوالين ستريس ديفيشنسي واللي هو الانزيم ذات ريسبونسبل فور ذا ميتابوليزم اوف ساكساميسونيوم اللي هو ساكسانايل كوالين لاست وي ويل كومبير بين ذا نان ديبولايزنج اند ديبولايزنج بلوكينج ايجنت نيوروماسكولار بلوكينج ايجنت ذا فيرست كومبريزن ذات ذا اكشن اوف نان ديبولايزنج مالتيبوكرين بانكيورانيوم اند بيركورانيوم can be reversed by an anticholine stress as we see because uh, the anticholine stress will increase the endogenous acetylcholine and the acetylcholine will overcome these drugs from the uh, nicotinic uh, NM type of receptors while the action of the polarizing agent saxamisonium and decamisonium will not be affected because uh, even this their action can be increased by this uh, anticholine stress but will not be uh, inhibited will not be uh, uh, overcome by these drugs this is the fairest difference between these two uh, group of uh, neuromuscular blocking drugs the second difference is that we have fasciculation the fasciculation and muscle fasciculation or muscle twitches is the contraction the little contraction on the muscles 
This only seen with the deborizing blockers, only seen with the succinyl misonium and decamisonium. Why? Because these drugs having an agonistic uh, effects. These effects will not occur, will not happen with the second type of drugs, will not occur with the non deborizing neuromuscular blocking drugs. Last, we have uh, the titanic fade. Titanic fade. Titanic means continuous contraction, sustained contraction. When titanic fade means this termination, the termination of this titanic uh, contraction. So, uh, titanic fade is a failure of the muscle to maintain a fused titany at the suffi a sufficiently higher frequency of the electrical stimulation. On the pharmacological lab, when we isolate the minimal isolation the skeletal muscle and usually we use the frog skeletal abdominal rectus abdominis, uh, rectus abdominis muscle of the frog uh, one of the skeletal muscles isolated when we provide the minimal electrical stimulation the muscles طبيعي جدا المسل دي يحصل لها تيتانيك يحصل لها تيتاني يحصل لها تيتاني continuous of use contraction if this muscle previously يعني قبل اذا عملناها قبل ما نعمل electrical current لو كنا اديناها non depolarizing اللي هو competitive neuromuscular blocking drugs تيبوكرارين لو اديناها تيبوكرارين وبعد ذاك عملنا لها electrical stimulation ما هيحصل تتاني هنقول انه حصل تتانيك فيد حصل اختفاء للتتاني نقول حصل تتانيك فيد اذا التتانيك فيد بيحصل مع a non-deborizing neuromuscular, uh, uh, neuromuscular blocking drugs. بفي مقارنة معنا العكس هيحصل العكس اللي بيحصل مع deborizing معنا deborizing electrical current لما ندي electrical current لمصل pre-treated يعني عملناها مسبقا ب deborizing اللي هو السكسي ميسونيوم والدكا ميسونيوم يستيل التتانيك التتاني حي حيكون موجود هيحصل تتاني هيحصل الكتريكال uh, الكتريكال استيميليشن هيعمل sustained muscle contraction تتاني اذا هيحصل هيكون موجود مع الديبولارايزنج uh, النيوروماسكولار باكنج دراكس وايل انه يحصل تيتانيك فيت هيحصل اختفاء له مع منه مع النان ديبولارايزنج بلوكنج ايجنت اي ثينك ذات از اول ذات از انف ريجاردنج ذا كولينيرجيك انتاجونست ان ذيس ليكشر وي توك اباوت ذا Uh, we talked about the cholinergic antagonists, which we divided into three categories. Antimuscarinic, we talked about details. But the ganglionic blocking drugs, because these are not, uh, يعني عندهم not uh, pharmacologically uh, of not uh, pharmacological importance, uh, minor pharmacological importance, because they are not used clinically, because they can block both, uh, both of the autonomic ganglia, sympathetic and parasympathetic, they, so they, they can produce wide, uh, wide uh, or various pharmacological effects, except we have a trimetaphan, who is the one that we use clinically for emergency to treat Uh, blood pressure in emergency, trimetaphan or ganglionic blocking drugs. And we talk uh, in details about the third category of uh, anticholinergic drugs, the neuromuscular blocking drugs, the drugs that affect a transmission at the motor end plate, which are the two uh, categories of deborizing and non deborizing blocking agent. That is all. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.